Morning again. Morning. And welcome to Hearts of Mount Zion United Methodist Church. I'm Lydia Head, serving as your worship leader on this first Sunday in the month of August. Amen. Amen. Let us recite our vision together. We are an inviting church that shows love by nurturing our members and empowering them to grow spiritually in God's Word and reaching out to share the good news of Jesus. Remain standing for our call to worship. Blessed be the Lord of hosts, who cleanses and heals our lives. Praise, Praise be God. to God. Blessed be the Holy One, who brings us from despair to hope. Praise, Praise be to God. God. Blessed be the giver of life, who nurtures and comforts us. Praise God. With our, with our whole hearts heart and soul. And soul. Amen. Our opening hymn, Down at the Cross, number 248, insert in your bullet. Join me in the opening prayer. 
God of forgiveness and new beginning, you feed our hearts with compassion and nourish our souls with the bread of heaven. As Jesus said to hungry crowds, knowing that they needed both physical bread and bread of heaven, fill us with your generous spirit and make us one with Christ. Amen. This time we'll have our announcements in recognition of visitors, followed by a grief share moment by Dr. Marsha Avery. Good morning, Hearts of Mount Zion family and friends. We have some announcements for our action and participation in the coming weeks. Uh, we received a letter from Sister Shirley Winston, uh, anniversary chair at Little Mount Zion uh, Baptist Church. They're having a 90th year church anniversary celebration on Sunday, August 8th. They're inviting us to participate to honor Pastor Chester Shelby of Quillen Temple. And the theme is Through the Years We Keep on Toiling. And that was inspired by our scripture in uh, Galatians 9, 6 in the King James Version. In the coming week, we have our activities here at Hartzell, which begin with our Tuesday night Bible study. Wednesday, noonday Bible study. Six o'clock is our Jubilant Voices choir rehearsal. And Thursday is five o'clock prayer ministry. And on Sunday is 8.30 Sunday school and 10 a.m. our worship service. And I think that's all I have right now. Oh, we do have our, um, our back to school uh, program going on for Alton and for Brock uh, Elementary Schools. Um, they We're collecting all of the book bags and items to go in the book bags, and there's a list on our website, pencils, spiral notebooks, essay books, that kind of thing. So please get that to the church and put it in our purple box over on the in the fellowship hall and we're going to be delivering that we don't know when exactly when but we will be doing it soon because school opens i think friday yeah, yeah. so we'll be getting that to those schools then pastor you have an announcement on wednesday at 10 o'clock i'll be meeting with the bishop which means i cannot get anywhere to do um bible study at 12 noon on time so uh, noonday Bible study will be canceled Wednesday, but we will have Tuesday night Bible study. Thank you, Pastor. Do we have any visitors with us? So please stand. We can recognize you and welcome you to our worship service. We're all family. On the flyer, Oh, I got it. I'm sorry. Uh, please remember to visit, call our uh, church family members who are listed here. And we want to wish a happy birthday to all of the August birthdays. And please be uh, birthdays and anniversaries. So please have a happy birthday, a happy anniversary. Uh, our community outreach, I did talk about our Adopt and Brock Elementary and Alton Elementary Schools. And the Princeton Review uh, is, uh, is hosting a virtual ACT practice test on Saturday, August 14th at 9 a.m. And the scores back session, which provides test taking skills and insights, will be held by the Princeton Review virtually on August 18th at 5 p.m. So please see our church Facebook page for the, uh, additional information. Uh, media training. Training is scheduled for Wednesday, August 4th at 5 p.m. for anyone who's interested in learning how to operate our um, media system and sy 
their area up top there. Grief share, and I think Marcia uh, is resuming our grief share soon. The group meeting will be begin on September 9th from 7 to 9 in our social hall. And Marcia is going to come and add some information to that. Good morning, church. Morning. Well, I'm very happy to announce that we will be resuming grief share, and boy, do we need it. Um, we will start on September 9th at 7, but that is going to be the orientation registration meeting. The first actual session will start the following Thursday. Um, I would ask you. If you're thinking about it, you know someone who could benefit from Grief Share, which is a ministry for people who have lost someone due to death. It is, you know, there are other kinds of death, and, and, and I'm, not, I'm not trying to minimize it, but, you know, pets die, you know, and pets are very much part of people's families. So, but it is not for that. It's not for loss of a job. It's not divorce or anything like that. It is only for those who have lost someone significant in their lives uh, due to death. We will meet, the, the, the ministry runs anywhere from 11 weeks to 13 weeks. Um, I'm gonna ask you if you would go, if you're thinking about participating, first of all, let me, before I forget this, proof of vaccination is going to be required. Okay, proof of vaccination is going to be required as well as, as, you, as we're accustomed now, masks. Um, the website, www.griefshare.org. You can find out a lot of information on that website, but as far as I'm concerned, one of the most important features of that website, and Pastor, you, I know you can attest to this, is to sign up for the daily email. You will receive an email every day for 365 days. These emails are inspirational and they are comforting. They consist of three parts. They consist of a message, a Bible passage, and a prayer. And it's a wonderful way to start your day or to end it. In fact, we will open each session of Grief Share with the reading of one of those, those emails. I have been uh, praying for someone to help me with, with Grief Share. And as my husband constantly reminds me that Grief Share is lay-led, not clergy-led. And he said to me, he said, don't worry. Someone will emerge. Someone will come forth. And lo and behold, he was right. <laughs> and I am so happy and so blessed. I just did, that's how blessings work, right? You don't see him coming? And so I'm going to ask James Holloway. It hurts to lose someone. Yes. Yes, it does. Grief Share is a friendly, caring group of people who will be walking alongside you through one of life's most difficult experiences. You don't have to go through this alone. God is described as a father of compassion and a God of all comfort, 2 Corinthians 1 and 3. When I lost my mother three years ago, Mrs. Avery approached me and asked me to uh, attend a grief sharing class because as you all know, I was the only child. And to lose my mother, it was like, I mean, my world just turned upside down. But 
when I started attending the grief sharing class, and I tell you, each video, each scenario that we watch pertained to me and everybody else that was in the class. So I'm asking you all, like Mrs. Avery said, if you have lost someone, please come and join us in the grief sharing because it is wonderful. One thing I can say, grief share will help you recover from your loss and look forward to rebuilding your life. Thank you. Hope to see you. And over the next coming weeks, you'll be hearing more and more about Grief Share. And as far as I'm concerned, one of the most powerful pieces is testimonies from those who have completed this ministry. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Um, when I went or going through my um, grief process, Pastor recommended the Grief Share emails, and they are very, very helpful. And I've missed them, and I keep looking for them, and I forgot it's only 365 days that you get that, but I'm like, I want another one, you know. So they are very helpful and informative and healing and comforting. Thank you. Please join me for the prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our first scripture lesson this morning comes from the Old Testament. Remain seated. Psalms 51, 1 through 12. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner, when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be cleansed, wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me in a willing spirit. Amen. Amen. The second scripture lesson comes from the New Testament. Please stand. John 6 chapter, verses 24 through 35. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal, then said the, to him, they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always, always. <clears throat> Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life, Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the word of God for the people of God. 
Thanks be to God. Our affirmation of faith, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This time we'll have a song of praise from our jubilant voice choir, One More Day, followed by a pastoral prayer and altar call. One 
more chance to do the best I can. I thank God. I thank God. I thank God just for one more chance. Time after time. I start my day with a made up mind. I see in my heart that this is the day I make a new start. But when the end of the day is done and nothing for him have I begun, then I begin to pray. For one more day. One more chance. One more chance. church say amen. It is prayer time and as always we lift up those on our sick and shut-in list. I had it just a minute ago. We lift up Angela Brown, Atha Brown, Willie Brown, Viola Collins, Maggie Dorsey Crane, Kenneth Fields, Dwayne Ginn, David Garino, Philip Harrison, Pauline Hart, Desmond Hart, Cedric Hartley, Eric Henderson, Lionel Jackson, Pauline Javery, Isabel Jenkins, Eugene Lee, Oleander Lester, Joe Malone, Arvis Porter, John Porter, Mary Rollins, Easter Smith, and Crystal Williams. And we must lift up our nation as we struggle against COVID-19. I was just told before church, um, Jackie O'Neill is a nurse and they have 70 people in her hospital struggling with COVID. Slidell Memorial is full and that means that we have to do everything we can to keep ourselves safe. Uh, I've been praying for the unvaccinated for some time and uh, I think here in Louisiana the rate of vaccination went up over hundred and fifty percent so prayer does change things and we have to keep praying that everybody take advantage of the uh, vaccines so we can go back to living the way we were let us pray Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. When we call, 
Won't you listen? Hear our prayer, O Lord. Most holy and gracious God, we come this morning with bowed down heads and humble hearts. We come thanking you for all the many blessings you shower us with day by day. We come with repentant hearts, asking that you forgive us when we have sinned and fallen short of your glory. Free us for joyful obedience to your will and your way. We lift up for you, for your healing and care, those on our sick and shut-in list. Bless and keep and heal them is our prayer. We thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit in this place. May it touch us, fill our hearts with joy, and inspire us to do your will and way. We pray for this world ravaged by COVID. Lord, you have promised us in your word that we who are called by your name, if we humble ourselves, pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways that you will heal our land. We are praying this day that you heal our land so sickened by COVID-19. We pray that all those who are unvaccinated do so while they still have the time. Bless our homes. May all of our homes be places of prayer and peace. In the midst of everything that is going on, may we keep our trust and faith in you, for we know, know that you can do anything but fail. You are a mighty God, and we are grateful that even in these difficult times that you are with us. And so we praise your holy name. In the midst of these troubled times, continue to bless our church so that we can be a light of hope in a world of darkness. We pray all these things in the matchless name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We'll now have our ministry of music, Jubilant Voice Choir, It's Good to Know Jesus, followed by our sermon by Pastor Deborah Williams, Live Worthy, coming from Ephesians 4th chapter, verses 1 through 16. It's good to know Jesus. Everybody ought to know him. Oh, he's the lily of the valley. Right in morning star, it's good to know. Everybody ought to know him. Oh, he is Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end is good to know. I came to Jesus just as I was. Ought to know him. Oh, he's joy in sorrow. My hope for tomorrow is good to know. I love the Lord. He heard 
heard my cry and pitied my every groan. As long as I live and troubles rise, I'll hasten to his throne. Everybody ought to know him. Oh, he's joy in sorrow. My hope for tomorrow is good to know. I didn't always know him. I will cry to my mama. I don't understand, mama. Why is it so hard, mama? You won't believe what she told me. Stop calling on me. Learn to call on Jesus. I'm so glad she told me. Mighty glad she told me. It's good to know him. He's a lily of the valley. Bright and morning star is good to know. The Lord. It's good to know Jesus. It's good to know the Lord. Our text this morning comes from the fourth chapter of Ephesians, verse 1 through 16. Listen for the word of the Lord. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, just as you are one body, just as you are called to one hope of your calling one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made cap captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. 
When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity, to, me to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped as, a, as each part is working properly promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious God, we give you thanks and we give you praise for another opportunity to be in this, your house of praise and worship. We pray, Lord God, that as your word goes forth, that you, that it does not return to you void and that it accomplishes what you set it out to do. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Let the church say amen. amen. If you are as old as I am, you remember that back in the day, before video games, computers, and smartphones, that children had a number of ways to entertain themselves. Old school children played hopscotch, jacks, jump rope, kickball, dodgeball, baseball, hide and go seek, and follow the leader. Following the leader was a fun game. To play this game, a leader and a, an observer were chosen. The rest of the children followed the leader, and the observer would make sure that those who were following did exactly what the leader did, or else they would be taken out of the game. In our spiritual walk, Jesus is our leader. Following our leader, Jesus, means that we endeavor to follow him in all that we do. Amen. We love as Jesus loves. We serve as Jesus serves. We do what Jesus does. As Christians, if we fail to follow our leader, we do harm to ourselves and we weaken the witness of Jesus. If we don't repent of our failure to follow Jesus, we will find ourselves off the path of righteousness and on the path to despair. If we fail to follow Jesus, if we fail to follow Jesus, folk will look at us and say, is that how Christians act? 
if that's how Christians act, I don't want to have anything to do with Jesus. So it's important that we walk in a manner worthy of our calling in Jesus. When we do, we give him honor. During my orientation for seminary, we were given these black t-shirts with Ephesians 4 and 1 printed on them. Live a life worthy of your calling. These t-shirts served as a reminder to us that we were embarking upon a different way of life. A life not guided by the things of the world but a life guided by Jesus. Even though all Christians must live a life worthy of their calling in Jesus, we, we in seminary would have a greater responsibility to do so. We were being called into a set-apart way of life that requires nothing less than living worthy of our calling. Our lives had to point to Jesus and not ourselves. After seminary, folk would be looking to us to understand what it means to live the Christian life. So we had to walk worthy. The Apostle Paul understood that the Christian life matters. It matters what Christians do and how we live. How we live can either help our witness for Jesus or weaken it. Paul understood that how we live can be an invitation to others to follow Jesus or a deterrent to following Jesus. So Paul starts this text by begging the Ephesian church to lead a life worthy of the call to which they had been called. The Ephesian church had Jewish and Gentile Christians. If Jewish and Gentile believers could continue in unity and love, they would be living a life worthy of their calling in Jesus. We are all familiar with representing our families, our schools, our social clubs, our fraternities, and our professions. We try to do anything that we can. We try not to do anything that would reflect badly on our affiliations. There's nothing wrong with that. When our behavior reflects positively on our, on our affiliations, others may want to belong to. In the same way, we ought to represent Jesus in the most positive way that we can. Sometimes we neglect to represent Jesus. We think that our Christian beliefs are private and no one's business. So we go undercover with our faith and we hide our lights under a bushel basket. I don't know why we are so timid when it comes to representing Jesus. I've never seen an undercover AKA. I've never seen an undercover Delta. I've never seen an undercover Kappa or an undercover Mason. If we can be proud of our other affiliations, we should be even more proud to represent Jesus. Jesus is our all in all. We should be eager to tell everyone what Jesus has done for us, that Jesus can do for them. If we take what Paul says in this text seriously, we realize not only should we tell someone about the goodness of the Lord in our lives, we should reflect that goodness in all that we do. In other words, we are called to live the life that we talk about. It's not enough for us to talk the Christian talk without walking 
the Christian walk. We also realize that living a life worthy of our calling in Jesus is not a suggestion. It's not something that we do only when we feel like it. Jesus doesn't welcome us into God's family and then say, oh, by the way, it sure would be nice if your life reflected my t teachings. When Jesus invites us to experience the transforming light of his love, we should let the, that light shine wherever we go and, our, and make sure that our Christian talk lines up with our Christian walk. Some time ago, I came across a book entitled, Yes, God, But I Have Several Excellent Excuses. <laughs> the title of this book reflects our human nature. We instinctively come up with all kinds of reasons for not doing what we know we should do. We all have several excellent excuses for not living worthy. Yes, God, I miss worship, but I had something else that I would have rather done at the time. Yes, God, I miss Bible study or I miss prayer because I was tired. Yes, God, I didn't pay my tithes because if I did, I wouldn't have enough for myself. Yes, God, I didn't help that person in need because he's different than me. We all have several excellent excuses. Our excuses may help us to justify our living in our own minds, but they don't get us any closer to living in a manner worthy of our calling in Christ Jesus. Living or walking in a manner worthy of our calling is not a matter of our own determination and our strength. We can only do it by the grace of God working in our lives. Every day, we should pray that God's grace empowers us to live worthy lives for Jesus. When that prayer is answered, we'll realize that representing Jesus or living a life worthy of our call is not about a bunch of do's and don'ts. It's about opening ourselves to Jesus. It's about letting the Holy Spirit fill us, mold us, and use us. It's about doing things God's way and not our way. It's about letting the spiritual fruits of humility, gentleness, and patience grow and develop in our lives so that we can maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace in the body of Christ. Walking worthy in, in, in a manner worthy of our calling is good for the body of Christ, and it's good for us. It empowers us to build up the body of Christ and reinforce our need to follow our leader, Jesus. Our unity doesn't mean that we all have to do the same things the same way. We're not called to be Stepford Christians. We are free to worship in our own way, but we got to worship. We are free to pray in our own way, but we must pray. We are free to serve in our own way, but we have to serve. We are free to have our own interests, but we never put those interests above Jesus. In the church, when we focus on Jesus and following him, we remove every obstacle that attempts to divide us. We respond to everyone with love. I'm not talking about getting along to go, uh, getting, going along to get along. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about forgetting about ourselves and focusing on Jesus because there is one body, one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father of us all. When we walk worthy, Jesus 
gifts us with spiritual gifts according to the grace that has been given to us all. All of us are given spiritual gifts to be used to, build, to edify or build up the body of Christ. This results in a unity of faith and maturity in Christ. Maturity in Jesus blesses us in so many ways. It empowers us to walk worthy and it keeps us from being influenced by false doctrine and trickery of those who are trying to build up themselves instead of trying to build up the body of Christ. It helps us to speak the truth in love to one another. When we mature in Jesus, we realize that the same intention and commitment and consistency that we apply to other activities in our lives can also be used in our efforts to live worthy. If you're a gardener, you understand that you have to be intentional about the care of your garden. Whether you're growing flowers or vegetables, you just can't plant a seed and never do anything to help that seed grow. To have a good garden, you have to till the soil, plant seeds, fertilize the soil, and water your garden. If you're not into, if you don't, your garden may be overrun with weeds. Maybe you're not into gardening. Maybe you're into diet and exercise. If, you, if so, you understand that you can't lose weight if you're dieting one day and the next you're not. You can't get physically fit if you're exercising one day and the next day you're not. Maybe keeping your house clean is your thing. And if it is, you know that it takes daily effort to keep your house clean. Just as our gardens need consistent care to grow and our bodies need a consistent healthy diet and exercise to be fit, just as it takes daily effort to clean our homes, we need to be intentional, consistent, and committed in our spiritual growth and development so that we can walk worthy. It's not enough to get baptized and expect that we will grow in Christian unity and spiritual maturity. Sunday worship alone won't do it. Here one Sunday, gone the next, won't do it. It takes consistent worship, daily prayer, daily scripture reading, service, and generosity to help us grow in unity and spiritual maturity. The good news is Jesus doesn't call us because we're perfect. Jesus keeps calling us regardless of our faults and failures. Jesus calls us because he loves us and wants us to experience the joy of the abundant life in him. When we answer the call to follow Jesus, we can leave our old hopeless lives in the past and experience the present and future hope with Jesus. When we follow Jesus, our leader, he models a brand new way of walking and a brand new way of talking. He models a brand new way of life for us. If you have tried to live worthy on your own in your own strength, you don't have to do so anymore. Just open your heart to Jesus and ask for him to strengthen you by his grace. Jesus is always with us, leading us on a path of righteousness. So keep on following our leader, Jesus, who empowers us to live a life worthy of the calling to which we have been called. My brothers and my sisters, what is being reflected by the way you live? Are you reflecting Jesus or are you reflecting something else? Realize that what you do in this life impacts 
here and now, as well as where you will spend all eternity. So don't let another day go by without living a life worthy of your calling and walking worthy. Tomorrow might be too late. Live a life worthy of your calling while you still have the time. Jesus is our leader, and we have to follow our leader every day. Follow him wherever he leads you. If Jesus says go right, go right. If Jesus tells you to go left, go left. If Jesus tells you to be still, be still. Follow Jesus. Go with him. Not just some of the way. Go with him all the way. Where he leads you, follow him. And you can live a life worthy of your calling in him. Let the church say amen. Amen. It is now that time in our service when we open the doors of the church. If there's anybody here looking for a church home, now's your opportunity to come join a fellowship which endeavors to follow Jesus in all that you do. You can come on membership transfer. You can come on profession of faith. You can come just as you are. Won't you come while you still have time? Won't you make up your mind? Make up your mind today. Oh, he'll make your life brand new. And he will take care of you. Won't you come?
it's offering time. I was getting ready to go home again. Our offertory scripture comes from 2 Corinthians, the ninth and the seventh verse. Will you read it with me, please? Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious God, we come this morning with cheerful hearts, giving to you what is right and not what is left over. We ask blessings on all those that give. In Jesus' name. As the choir sings the offertory, you may use that time to prepare your offering and uh, give it on the way out. You may put those who are watching us on Facebook, you can put your offering in the mail or you can go to our website uh, to pay your offerings. Let us hear the offertory. The next time you're riding down the road in your car, sing this song to the Lord. You may get where you're going a little bit faster. Yeah. Come. Come. Let us. Come. Let us adore you. Kneel down before him. Down before him. Worship and adore him. Worship and adore him. Come on, let's say that again. Come. Let us, Come, let us adore him. kneel down before him. Kneel down before him. We, worship you, Lord. we worship you, Lord. Worship and adore him. Help me say, come on and say, Emmanuel. 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 We worship you, dear Lord. How many know when praises go up, blessings come down? I dare you learn to praise him even in the midst of a trial. Let us. Come, let us adore him. No matter, no matter. I mean, no matter what's going on in your life, we must know how to give him a sacrifice of praise. Now, I know you know the song by now. Come. Thank you, Lord. Come, let us adore Kneel down before him. He's the King of King and Lord of Love. Come on, say Emmanuel. Emmanuel.
first of all, I'm not a nurse. I'm a surgical tech. And I wanted to uh, warn Pastor about the um, COVID count in our hospitals in Slidell, which is moderate, which is like anywhere from 9 to 15 right now. But in St. Tammany Hospital, there were 70 patients there. Now, this was, this was last week. So just be careful. Yeah. Protect yourself. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Also, since we're doing COVID announcements, yeah. <laughs> listen to the CDC. Every day, the requirements are changing. And they made an important change for vaccinated people. Mm -hmm. They say if you're inside, vaccinated or not, you should wear a mask. So keep that in mind. 